and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully everybody is staying safe and staying healthy in the midst of the coronavirus. I've already posted a video as a resource to parents on five tips for emergency homeschooling that you can check out. I will also link below. But I just wanted to follow up on that video today and break down a couple of other suggestions that I have that could help things go more smoothly at home. My daughter is usually in a homeschool hybrid program. So she attends school two days a week and she's home three days a week. And as part of that program, we regularly have to submit uh, a documentation as to what it is that we're doing at home. I remember the first time that this work journal log was due, it felt like they were asking me what I've been doing at home all day and we've been doing tons of stuff, but I felt like I didn't really have an answer. What have you been doing? What has your child learned? Wow. Well. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> See ya. I think the key to making it feel as though you are moving forward day by day and week by week is to rely heavily on time blocking. It's something that I mentioned in my last video and probably you've seen a lot of suggestions and recommendations for potential schedules amidst the COVID-19 uh, emergency homeschool. So I have two macro ideas with regard to time blocking for you today and then five micro ideas. So hopefully the combination of these two ideas will give you a good framework and also some pragmatic advice to implement to help things move along more smoothly. So in terms of the first macro idea, again, as I said, there's so many different examples of potential schedules that you could be implementing, but I think without a theory of why or what it is that we're doing, they're incomplete. And it's just really difficult to try to impose an hourly block schedule on your life without a real understanding of where this approach is even coming from. The point of all of this is to give us some sort of structure and flow to the day and to help your children automate their own processes. So it's not just about you needing to be the executioner of all of this, but it's for you to establish a system of expectation that your children can also take initiative within. The second macro idea is that it is not your job responsibility or obligation to keep your children entertained at all times throughout the day. That's also part of the purpose of this time blocking that I think is getting lost in the way a lot of these schedules are being designed and distributed. As far as very specific advice when it comes to setting up your time blocking and setting up your schedule for the day, I first want to suggest that you give one to even up to two hour time blocks per subject or per task. This will build in a lot of flexibility for incidental things that go on during the day and you won't feel frustrated if you're running on a very tight 30 minute or even sometimes one hour window, which is not enough time for you know, bathroom breaks, uh, snack time, uh, misplaced books, or whatever else may take time that you didn't anticipate. So you want to be really generous with your time blocks and then something that I also suggest is not necessarily having the same thing blocked for each child uh, during a given amount of time. For example, with Laya and Lincoln, I make sure to mismatch their math time blocks because that's something that requires a little bit more instruction and focus one-to-one -one with each student. So while Laya is doing her math, I might set Lincoln up with some sort of reading comprehension activity that he can mostly do independently and vice versa. Another thing that I suggested in my previous video is just making sure that you have an anchor activity almost on a daily basis or at least on a regular basis. The anchor activity could be something that you are going to be very involved in or something that you're not going to be too involved in. So um, on Monday, we had an anchor activity, which was a movie. Laya recently read The Devil's Arithmetic again for the online reading class that she's taking through the Center for Lit. So on Monday, the anchor activity was watching The Devil's Arithmetic. Uh, and that's something that obviously wasn't really involved on my end. The video was offered through Prime Video. I set it up for them on my laptop and they were able to watch that. Um, it was a little bit over Lincoln's head in some places, but for the most part, it was an activity that kept them busy for about, you know, two hours, the length of the movie. Yesterday we did an activity that I was more involved with. We made some clay from scratch, 
uh, following YouTube videos and then we made some flower models uh, per Laya's botany class. Um, it was an activity that was described in the botany class so just so that she would understand the different parts of a flower and it's something that Lincoln could participate in as well. So that's something that we did that took a couple of hours between making the clay itself and then molding the flowers. So very fun activity and that was our big anchor activity for the day where there was a little bit of a peak in my attention for them. Parts. Okay, so these are the petals okay. and all the petals together is called the corolla. Okay. And then down here are the set sepals or sepals okay and then all them together is called the calyx okay this is obviously the stem okay and then if you look inside here okay these would be the um stamen okay but we don't have the poles and the um the whole thing so if you would in real life it would be a pole the pole part would be called the filament and then the top part would be called the anther Another suggestion that I have is that you brainstorm a pretty robust list of what I would describe as filler activities. These are activities that would go into your blocks of free time that are independently directed, that are easy go-tos. So quiet reading, journaling, coloring, independent art projects, all of these kinds of things would fall under the filler activity list. I would also throw out making a PowerPoint presentation about some aspect of their learning or even editing an iMovie if your kids are old enough to do that. These again are all things that the kids can engage in on their own. They're a little bit more of a creative outlet but something that should keep them occupied for a fair amount of time and it's a better option than just resorting to purely video games or television time. Those are your last resorts. In addition to understanding what your filler activities are, another piece of advice that kind of is related to this is what I call a reset. We do a playroom reset or a homeschool classroom reset at least once, sometimes twice during the day. So what that means is we just take a break of about 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how bad things are, and we just reorganize and reset the space because as books are being pulled out, as toys are being pulled out, as learning manipulatives are being pulled out, it's important that those things get back uh, to where they belong. And so we are doing that periodic reset, which is also kind of an important little filler activity. Part of the reason why it's good to block more time than you expect, or this is something that you can just add in at different points in the day. The other suggestion that I have for you is to make sure that you incorporate physical movement throughout the day. So we have a dog, it's going for a walk with the dog. They can bring their scooters or skateboards as we do that. So that's one way that they can move. We can use the Wii to do uh, just dance, or we can just have a good old fashioned dance party. Still, we are trying to make it out to the soccer field. This is an activity that we can still do pretty independently without having to come into contact with other people. There are great videos for yoga online for kids. So you just wanna make sure that you are still breaking up the day with physical activity that will just reset their minds, keep their bodies moving, and keep their energy and attention up. Final piece of advice is to just make sure that we are prioritizing two to three things that are kind of a must execute for the day. And I would say three things if it's just one kid that you have at home, but probably only two things per child if you have more than one child at home. This is going to be a great measuring stick for you to make sure that you are moving things forward, that you are executing and feeling like you are accomplishing something throughout the day. So just quick recap of everything. The whole point of time blocking is to just overlay some sanity on a pretty fluid situation. We also just want to remember that it's not our job to keep our children entertained during every moment of the day. This is a life skill that they're going to need to learn for themselves. We are just there to provide some structure and some guidance to their learning and to their day. Again, recapping the specific advice, you wanna make sure that you allow one to two hour time blocks for the activities that you set out for them. You wanna make sure that you have an anchor activity that you make sure you execute on during the day and it can be more or less involved as far as your participation depending on what you have to do during the day. You wanna make sure that you have a list of go-to filler activities and you want to make sure that you incorporate a reset time, uh, one to two times during the day so that everything can kind of stay orderly and you don't descend into chaos at home. 
you want to make sure that you include physical movement throughout the day, and finally you want to prioritize the two to three things that you are going to execute on every day at the top of the day so that way you feel accomplished and you feel like you're moving forward no matter what happens. I hope these tips are helpful. Please make sure to leave a comment or uh, post a question if you have any other questions or thoughts. If you have suggestions for any of this, I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much for watching.